Hello and welcome to another GCSE computer science video with me, Mr. Goff from MrGoff.com. Today's video will focus on secondary storage. RAM is volatile, meaning all its contents are lost when the power is switched off. ROM is not, but it only stores the bootstrap instructions. Secondary storage is needed as a non-volatile location where programs and data can reside while the power is off. There are three types of secondary storage you need to know about magnetic storage, optical storage, and solid state storage. Magnetic storage refers to hard disk drives. These use platters that spin at very high speeds. There's a read-write head at the end of an actuator arm that can move in and out. This allows the read-write head to reach any point on the platter. To write to magnetic storage, the read-write head polarizes a section of the platter as either north or south. To read from it, it detects the polarity of the section. Platters in magnetic storage are split into concentric circles known as tracks. These are further divided into sectors. So that the computer doesn't have to spin the disk so far, it tries to locate whole programs in contiguous sectors. A group of sectors is known as a cluster. Magnetic storage offers high capacity at relatively low cost. It's less portable than SSD and optical storage. It can be either internal or external. Some of the new external magnetic storage is less prone to problems with moving it around. Optical storage refers to CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. Each of these has a single track that spirals out from the center of the disc. To write to optical storage, a strong laser burns holes known as pits into the disc. To read from optical storage, a weak laser is shone against the surface. If it hits a pit or a land, which is a section that has not been burned, the laser bounces directly back into a sensor and is read as a zero. But if it hits a section that's going into or out of a pit, then it's not reflected back and it is read as a one. Blu-ray discs use the narrowest and most accurate laser, so they're able to fit a tighter and more detailed spiral circle from the center to the outside. Optical storage is comparatively low capacity, but comes at a very low cost. Optical discs are highly portable inside their cases, but can be easily scratched, placing them in or out of the drive. They have a shorter overall lifespan than solid state or magnetic storage. Solid state storage is often referred to as flash memory. It uses a floating gate to either trap or not trap electrons to represent ones and zeros. An electrical charge must be applied when you flash the memory, which is the name given to giving it a new state. Solid state storage has no moving parts, so it's very durable and widely used in portable devices. It's the fastest type of storage, but it's also the most expensive type. The energy efficiency and silent running that is offered by solid state storage adds to its suitability for portable devices. With the internet becoming a part of everyday life and transfer speeds increasing, more people have turned to cloud storage. This is where your data is stored remotely, usually by a third party. When your data is stored in the cloud, you can access it from anywhere in the world. That is, as long as you have an internet connection. When you use cloud storage, your files are automatically backed up by the service provider. This is normally done in multiple locations at their servers around the world. There are some who worry about the security of the cloud and would prefer to keep sensitive files on their own servers. When you are asked to compare storage devices for a particular scenario, you should consider the following factors. Cost. Some cloud providers will provide a certain amount of storage for free. Otherwise, SSD is the most expensive, optical disks are the cheapest. For the right price, cloud providers will provide unlimited storage. After that comes magnetic storage, followed by SSD, and finally optical storage. Speed. The speed of your cloud service will depend on your internet connection. Otherwise, SSD is fastest, magnetic is next, and optical is the slowest. Portability. Technically, you have your data with you everywhere if it's stored in the cloud and you have access to the internet. SSD is very portable because it has no moving parts. Optical disks are quite portable. The least portable is magnetic storage. However, recent external hard disk drives have greatly reduced the problems with portability. Durability. Both solid state and magnetic drives are very durable and will last a long time. Optical disks 
could wear out in a couple of years. And finally, reliability. With a cloud service, your reliability depends on your internet connection. SSD is very reliable with its no moving parts. As long as you keep magnets away from it, magnetic storage is also very reliable. Optical storage can be easily scratched or damaged by sunlight. That brings us to the end of our look at secondary storage devices. Join me again next time when we'll take a brief look at what an embedded system is. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help yourself learn computer science. And until next time, it's bye for now.